This is the Firebox Gas Burner. To be honest, this was not my first choice. I've had the Transio Burner in my cart for some time now, but I still couldn't find it in myself to pay that high price. Firebox sent me their burner to test and review, and I'm so lucky they did. I've used this burner several times now, and it's impressive. Don't take my word for it. Let's go through it so you can decide. The first question we need to answer is who is this for? I can see this working for backpacking, long or short multi-day camps, overlanding, or even better, a beach vacation. One benefit of a gas burner revolves around recreational burning restrictions. In my local region, we are restricted to canister fuels, which unfortunately excludes alcohol stoves. Other times, there may be burn bans due to environmental conditions. Some see these restrictions as a nuisance, but it's there for us to be good stewards to the land. So I really don't mind. So let's get on with it. First, the specs. The weight is 8.1 ounces and an output of 2100 watts. Just know the performance will vary based on the quality of gas used. It's three and a quarter inches long and one and three eighth inches wide. The shielded hose is 15 inches long. It works in all weather conditions above negative 22 degrees Celsius or negative 7.6 Fahrenheit. Make sure you read and keep the operating instructions. Okay, so let's start with this end. The valve is the threaded international standard EN417. You can also purchase this LPG fuel adapter, which allows you to attach to any Lindell valve, like the Coleman style propane canister. They're less expensive, and you can find them just about anywhere in the US. The regulator action is smooth and tight. I like that it takes only one revolution to fully open, but it's still sensitive enough for the finer adjustments. From the regulator, you have a shielded 15 inch hose which connects to the burner assembly. Both ends of these hose do spin freely. You also have these springy wings which locks the entire assembly to the burner pins firmly. The barrel is where the magic happens. There are four carefully sized air holes. Not sure if you noticed, but there is a collar which wraps around the barrel. Yes, folks, you can control the air intake. One of my favorite pastimes in high school was upsetting my chem lab teacher by constantly having my Bunsen burner in campfire mode. It set the mood for my lab team, what can I say? So you can do the same thing with this burner. It's not just for cooking, folks. You can also set the mood. Seriously though, this is great. Another tool in my outdoor gear that has multiple uses. Most burners are loud, but with the addition of the air mixture control, you can restrict a little air to quiet it down. As we move up the barrel to the flame spreader, you may notice that it's a bit smaller compared to some burners. I appreciate that it's small enough to provide focus coverage for cups, smaller pots and pans. Now, for bigger pots and pans, you just need to place this titanium plate on top to further diffuse the flame. This is genius in my book. This titanium plate also provides radiant heat for grilling. <laughs> yes, grilling, just like your backyard infrared grill. This is a game changer. Rest assured, I will be making future videos on the best setup for this burner, so please consider subscribing and smash that bell so you know once it's posted. Let's go through the different installs. All right, let's get pretty all set up. We're gonna first pass the regulator through the feed hole opposite the wind dampener.
The traditional way of inserting the bottom grate will not work because the hose will be in the way. You need to slide the grate under the hose first before pushing it to the bottom. The outer slots on the second row is the highest placement for this burner. You can go lower, but don't go higher than this. You need to ensure the hose is in the center, in between the burner pins. Gently feed the hose. We're going to secure this first wing to the burner pin. Then gently slide the other wing in place until we hear that distinctive click. You can see it sits firmly in place. A firm push will seat the burner pins at the bottom of the slots. Let's get Frank set up. These are the recommended slots for gas burners. It's the same process as before, but we'll be feeding the regulator through the wind dampener side. All right, let's get Gidget set up. The setup process is the same as before, but it doesn't matter which feeding hole you use. Now for the fun part, let's do some burn tests. To keep the test equal, I'll be opening the regulator a quarter turn for all the burn tests.
Well, folks, I hope I gave you enough information on this product. If you like content like this, please smash that like button. I've already shot a few videos using this burner, so if you want to see them, please consider subscribing. Thanks again for watching, and have a good burn.